I have this area right in front of my back door where all the shoes go. Uh, we don't let our kids wear their shoes in the house, so they all wind up right here. I've been trying to come up with an idea of a way to keep everything organized, and I thought of this uh, shoe rack that I could put in that little space I just showed you where the, uh, the basket of shoes was. Lately, I've been using my CNC router to cut up sheet goods, uh, plywood, and so on uh, to make little boxes and projects. One of the challenges that you run into when you're working on a project like this is how to make a good structural joint. Uh, in this picture, it's shown uh, finger joints, which you generally make on a table saw. Finger joints generally consist of a pin and socket configuration, as shown here. Um, it's a little bit difficult to make something like this on a CNC mill because of the mill end mill geometry. We all know that you can't fit a square peg in a round hole, and that's kind of the problem you run into while trying to do this with a CNC machine. This animation kind of shows what your end mill does when it's trying to get into the corner of this pocket. The red periphery shows you the internal radius that's left over as a result of the end mill geometry and tool path. Somebody came up with the idea of running the end mill into the corner to provide a relief there so your square pin will fit inside that hole. It's called a dog bone fillet. Leading up to this project, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube to try to figure out how to do this the right way. I ran into a video series by a guy named Patrick Rainsbury. He created a plugin for Fusion 360 and a video series that explains how to not only make the dog bone fillets, but um, create a flat pattern that you'd lay over like an imaginary piece of plywood so that you could nest all of your parts and cut them out with a tool path. This is just a quick image of the plugin as it appears in uh, Fusion 360 and what it yields. I didn't want to t spend too much time uh, going over his material, but if you're interested in learning how to do this, I'll provide a link to his video down below. So this is the design I came up with. Uh, I made a few of these surfaces translucent so you could see the pins and then the uh, mortise that are cut into the plywood uh, to hold everything together. The entire thing will kind of fit together like a puzzle with no fasteners. I was able to fit the entire job on three pieces of plywood. I used two pieces of three quarter inch for the uh, sides back and top and then a half inch piece for the, um, for the drawers. This picture shows a simulation of my tool path. Uh, you can see the blue lines there and the yellow lines represent when the, uh, the cutter head's picking up. I was able to countersink some holes and drill drywall screws through the, um, through the board into the spoil board below to secure it for cutting. This picture shows all the cutout pieces. Uh, you can imagine how long it would take to make something like this just using regular shop tools or a uh, table saw. The 3D modeling and the making the tool paths and the dog bones and everything in Fusion 360 requires a little work up front, but it really saves you a lot in the back end. And um, the best thing is, is that you can uh, cut one of these out at a later time using the same program. And it really doesn't require a lot of effort just to throw some. A new plywood on and cut another one from the same design. 